Hey nerds, welcome back. I'm Tyler. In today's video, we're gonna be completing the sign that we started in the previous video. In that video, I used the Xtool P2 CO2 laser to engrave and cut out all of these components. In this video, we're carrying on where I assemble everything and show you how I painted so that your sign can come out as good as mine. If you didn't see the first video, don't worry about it. There's gonna be a short recap to kind of catch you up to speed. If you're interested in the sign design, I have the file up for free to my Patreons. If you'd like to contribute to the channel, I'd love to have you. If you don't wanna contribute that way, but you do like the file design, I have it up for sale for about five bucks on my online store. It's like you buying me a beer or something for my efforts. So I really appreciate it if you'd like to contribute that way. Let's jump into the video so we can start protecting those fingers and wieners. Quick recap of the previous video, we used a test grid to come up with some ideal cut settings. Mine were 20 millimeters a second at 50% power for eighth inch MDF. Now this is with the Xtool P2 CO2 laser. Your mileage may vary on this. It really depends on your machine and even between P2s, it may be different. So I recommend doing the test grid and then dialing in not just your cut settings but also your engraving settings. I'm using NAF MDF for this to limit some of the nasty toxins that are in the adhesives for these materials. But quickly we cut out the three components to this sign. I've got a frame over here on the right. I have the engraved portion here in the center and then a backing over on the left. Now the backing is mainly to increase the thickness and also the perceived quality, and the frame will go on top of the engraving just like this. That, in my opinion, also will increase the perceived value or visual appeal of the overall product. The next steps we're gonna take here is to remove the leftovers from vaporizing this MDF. So there's just like these little bits of like charred crap that's left in the center here. I'm going to be using a stiff bristle nylon brush to start. Uh, I actually found like a better way to do this, but let me show you the results as I go through with this nylon. I probably wouldn't use a metal brush. I think that might uh, damage the MDF a little bit and leave some scratches. But as you can see, I've got a little nylon brush attachment on my dust collection hose here, and that actually removed much better than that regular bristle brush. So if you have one of those, try that. And then I used 200 grit sandpaper on my random orbital sander there, removed all of like the scorch marks and the little greasy crap that's left over. My overall plan is to spray this with black. The letters will retain the black and then I wanted to go over with a roller brush and hopefully the letters and outlines would remain untouched by the white paint and remain black but it really didn't work out as planned as you can see the roller brush got into all the letters and all of the outline which really sucks uh, I was hoping that this was going to work I think that there's a way that you can do this I'm just not smart enough to figure it out so what I'm going to do is Paint it all white, and then by hand, I'll use this black acrylic paint and get in all the letters and all of the outline details, and then paint the rest with these other colors. I'm gonna be using some brown and some white for the guy on the left, and then I'll use white and red to create like a light pink for the little wiener dude on the right. And this is up to you. You can paint them green, you know, what it, like whatever weird color you're thinking. I just thought it would be funny. We've got like a little brown wiener or finger on the left and then a little light pink wiener on the right. But yeah, then I'll use red in the blood and I'll show you uh, in, for, in more detail when I'm done with this. It's just gonna take too long for me to film it. So I'm just telling you my plan up front. The black is gonna go first in all of the little details and lines and letters. And if I screw that up, I'll use white to clean up what I might've missed or overpainted. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. I also recommend having packs of different types of brushes, flat ones, angled ones, small ones, big ones. That way you can try them out and see what works best for you. I also trimmed the bristles on some of these to help me paint better. Okay, so I'm back now. I've done all of the painting. This piece is basically done. Let me describe to you what I did and hope that 
I can give you good enough detail instructions on my process so that your sign will come out as good or better uh, as mine did. So first off, I went through, just like I was saying, and painted all of the outlines, all of the letters, everything on here in black with a really small brush. So I just traced inside, and I would encounter an issue as I'm painting inside the engravings, uh, the bristles from my brush would pop out and mark the white part of the board. So in order to fix this problem, what I ended up doing is keeping a, a bunch of Q-tips around and some damp Q-tips and then just going through while the paint was drying and clean up those parts that came up over the engraving into the white. And I did that all over the place. Then afterwards, using the same paint that I used to you know, paint this background here, I came back through and tidied everything up. For the most part, the Q-tip would remove the paint, but because the paint can be kind of porous on the, like, on the background, it would retain little dots, things like that. So I went through and just cleaned all that up so you wouldn't be able to really tell. And it wasn't just the black that I had to clean up. I'm not perfectly rock solid, so I had to clean it up with the colored paints as well. So I would just get kind of used to that method and prepare yourself to do a little bit of tidying up. It just made the outcome of this product much, much better in my opinion. Now let's talk about painting in color. These little guys are some cool details I wanna go over. Let's zoom in a little bit. I'll give you a much better view here in a second, but the main process for me was to paint them the solid colors. Now for pink, I used red and a lot of white. And then for the brown, I used brown and a lot of white to give it kind of like an opaque feel. So I painted everything and then I came back through with a darker version. So red and less white and I created little shadows on the pink guy and then brown and less white and I created shadows on the little brown guy. So I did it around the eyes, I did it on the edges, on the lips. And you'll see it a little bit better here in a second, I'll go over it, but I also did a little bit of a blend here on the cap. So it's light, light pink in the center and then goes out to like a regular red color on the edges. And then on the blood, I added little white marks to create kind of like a shine, just to add a little bit of interest and make it seem a little bit, I don't want to say realistic, but a little bit more fun and cartoony. Now that we've gone over the overview, let's get a little bit closer here and take a look at the details. So as you can see, the letters did come out very nice after the cleanup. They look very crisp, in my opinion. There's a couple spots where there's a little bit of inconsistency. The lines aren't perfect, but you know, give it a two foot roll. If you're two feet away and it looks nice, then it is nice. But here you can see where I added in those shadows. So again, I have a solid color on the pink guy, and then I came through with a little bit darker of a pink and then added in these shadows and these little marks all over the place that kind of made it look kind of gross, but gave it like a texture shadows in the eyes and then on the tongue I also did a, a little bit of a blend from pink to red towards the bottom again just like you would think the bottoms of things have a shadow the tops of things would typically be lighter but here I would go around the body and add some of these little details I think my favorite shadows are the ones around the eyes it just kind of I don't know it looks good in my opinion now for the blood, like I said, after it was all painted in, I just came back through with some white and highlighted on the very tops and it gave it kind of like a shiny kind of look. And then in the caps here, I did from a light pink blend to the dark red. And how you do a blend is you start off with one color, like a light pink, paint it in the center, add a little bit of red to it, stir it up, then paint the darker red and then it continuously do that process until you get to the edge color that you're looking for and it could be as many steps as you want i think i use like three or four bl uh, blend steps in mine and that's really it for the complicated painting stuff now let's look at the building components there's only three we've got the backing we have the painted engraved piece that we just talked about and then the frame 
off camera, I took the frame and I painted it black with a roller brush and some paint from my local big box store. So this is how the final assembly is gonna end up looking, nice and thick, 3 8 inch thick. Trying to glue all these up at once is asking for trouble in my opinion. I would have if they made pin nails just shy of 3 8 inches in length. But instead, I'm gonna use Loctite Power Grab. It's basically, it's just construction adhesive. I've used it in a couple projects before and it works really well with painted interior items. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add it to the back of this frame. Make sure and keep the orientation correct when you do this. It, I don't think it works if it's flipped. But anyway, I'll run construction adhesive all along the back side of the frame and then kind of sandwich these two pieces together. And we're gonna get rid of the very back piece to start. Again, it's just too many pieces to try and hold together and keep in place while managing this glue up situation. I have T-Track in my workbench, which is cool because I can use these clamps for all kinds of different situations, but I won't really be able to rely on just the clamps. The frame is a little bit too flimsy and is gonna require some pressure in all of the different corners. I could put a larger board over top and press it with these clamps so it would be even pressure, but then I wouldn't be able to keep an eye on the alignment and make sure that it's set up right. So. I'm gonna grab a bunch of batteries and heavy crap that I can put in all these areas. And here you go, you can see them. Get some paper towels, some shop towels and keep them there. And then I was gonna use some popsicle sticks to spread, but I think the better idea is to get gloves. So here I am adding the construction adhesive and then I grab some gloves. That using your fingers is so much better, man. Just do it that way. And notice the straight edge towards my belly that I'm using as a reference point so I can align these. But I added a bunch of heavy things for clamping pressure. And this is the second day I'm now doing the glue up for the back piece. Again, smeared it all together, used the straight edge as a reference point and then used a bunch of heavy things as clamping pressure to glue that up. After that cured, I used a flush trim bit on my router to flush up all the sides. Doesn't You don't have to use a router, you could use sandpaper, but it's much easier to use the router. And I still did use some sandpaper to go through and just make sure all the sides were the same. And then with the same paint I used for the frame, I go around, I paint the back, and you should probably wait for this to dry, but because I'm impatient, I also painted around all the edges. So now we've got nice, consistent black color on the frame and on the sides. At this point, we're done with painting. Everything is looking really nice and I wanna protect it. So what I'm gonna do, I went and bought some of this stuff called Mod Podge. Uh, there we go, in focus. It's a clear acrylic sealer. And I was a little afraid it was gonna ruin this. Uh, sometimes paints and sealers, right, different finishes can react weird and kind of eat each other up. So I wanted to get a nice little view here and document as evidence that the sign actually looked really good before we add this uh, clear coat on it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outside and it stinks, it's pretty gnarly stuff. So make sure that you're prepared with some sort of protection. But I started on the sides and then did just a bunch of coats. I probably did five coats of this stuff on the front and the back and dude, it came out sweet, check this out. Last step for me is gonna be adding a sawtooth hanger on the back, that way we can display this baby proudly. The ones that I got have really shallow screws so they won't poke through on the top up here on the sign. I'll include those and really anything that I used in this project, I'll include it in the description below. If you guys are having trouble finding paints or paintbrushes, so on. But uh, let's get back to the garage. And that's it, man. Came out really sweet. I'm super happy about this. I've shown this to all types of family members and they immediately disowned me. All my friends love it though, and that's the important part. Nothing like a sweet reminder in the shop to keep your fingers and your wiener safe. Thanks again, you guys, for hanging out and building with me. I'll see you next time.